What's going on YouTube? This is SG1 Sports and we continue here with our 2023 college football predictions. Utah is up next. Let's take a look at some of the other predictions for the Utes. The FBI has this team at 8.7 and 3.7. So, you know, roughly 9 and 3, maybe 8 and 4. Of course, that does include a potential Pac-12 championship game which they give them about about uh, I guess a, a 40% chance of getting to the Pac-12 championship. Athlon has them at 9-3. and three. The over-under for this team is at 8.5. So it does seem like the, the consensus here is that this team will go 8-4 and four or 9-3. and three. That seems to be about where Utah is. But most people do have Utah up there in the top 12 or so, maybe the top 15 at least. And so this is a team that's expected to be pretty good. And I expect them to be good. I think they're going to be very similar to, to last year. They don't really lose a whole lot. Uh, they're very solid on defense. Offensive side of the ball it looks very solid as well. Cam Rising coming back. Uh, this team should be really good once again. And you know they're going to be well coached. They always are. They're not going to have as many five stars as USC or Oregon. But um, they're going to be well coached. And they're going to be able to compete, I think, with everyone in the conference. And I have a chance to once again win the Pac-12 championship. But the schedule's pretty tough. Uh, here it is. And Cam Rising, will he be healthy? That's going to be a big question uh, here in these first two games. They'll start off with Florida. Uh, that says September 2nd, but that's actually been moved to Thursday since I did this graphic. Uh, that, that'll be a Thursday night game. National spotlight. Going to be a big one. Florida traveling out west to Utah. I expect a good, good game similar to last year, but I think this Utah team is going to be just too good. Um, it's going to be... I don't think it's going to come down to the last play like last year, but I do think it's going to be a really good game. I think Utah probably wins it by 10 points or so, uh, something like that, if Cam Rising is healthy. If he's not healthy, Florida's got a real shot. Uh, they have a real shot. This is still a talented roster. Uh, can Graham Mertz, can he kind of live up to his potential? And when I say potential, I'm going all the way back to when he came to Wisconsin as a freshman, not necessarily as potential uh, coming over to Florida. Not really a lot of hype around that transfer, but um, if if he can play really well, Florida will have a chance, especially if Cam Rising is out. But again, I'm going to go with Utah, and I'm going to assume, assume that Rising is playing. Uh, no reason to think that he won't, but we don't know for sure. And then you've got Baylor on September 9th, the road game. I believe this is a noon Eastern time kickoff, so you got Utah playing very, very early. Baylor's going to be very solid. I expect a tough, hard-fought game. Uh, both teams going to be physical, probably a lower scoring game, defensive battle. Uh, and, and I don't, you know, this is a tough one to pick. I think Baylor has, a, Baylor has a legitimate chance to win this game. Again, this is a team that was really young last year. Um, they they overperformed a couple of years ago. Dave Aranda has already proven that he can get it done here at Baylor. So I, I think this is a tough one to pick. I, I've kind of gone back and forth on this one. If Cam Rising is not... 100%. I think Utah probably loses this game, but I'm going to say that the Utes find a way with a veteran team to go on the road, beat Baylor, and then I think Weber State will also be a win. So they're 3-0 and there to start off the season. But again, if Cam Rising, if he does not play in the first couple of games of the season, or if he, even if he's limited and can't, and is not 100%, I think there's a good chance Utah loses one of those first two games. But again, if he's healthy, I think they find a way to win. Uh, again, Baylor going to be a very, very tough game, but I'm going to go with Utah. They play UCLA on September 23rd. This should be a good one. Uh, a nice matchup here. Two different styles. Uh, both teams are going to want to run the football, though, and I expect a good one. I think Utah, though, playing at home, they're going to be the better team. Their defense is, is going to be better than UCLA, so they'll make the stops when they need to, and they get the win there. And then a quick turnaround, a weeknight game on the road at Oregon State. Uh, this is a this is a tough tough spot here. Uh, again, right after playing a pretty good UCLA team, then you go on the road. Tough place to play. Weeknight game. We see upsets here all the time. I think we see one here. I think Oregon State pulls off the upset. Uh, you look at these two teams; they're very similar. Uh, both teams are going to want to run the football. Uh, defensive battle, kind of like the Utah Baylor game. Um, and I just think that that Oregon State is going to find a way at home to get it done. So I'm going to go with the Beavers. Then they get a bye week. It'll be an extra long bye week because they play, again, they don't play on Saturday. They play before Saturday. Then they get the bye week. And then they'll play Cal on October the 14th. This will be a home game for Utah. A veteran team in Cal, but I just don't think they quite stack up with Utah uh, with the extra time to prepare. No reason to expect Utah to lose this game. So I think they bounce back. They get to 5-1. and one. 
Then they play USC. Of course, they've kind of had their number recently. Uh, this time playing on the road at USC. And I've already done predictions for USC, Oregon, and Washington. So you've already, if you watch those videos, you already know my predictions. But I'll, I'll still touch on these games. I think that, you know, a big key here is going to be the offensive line for USC. Can they protect Caleb Williams from this really, really good Utah defense? I do think USC's defense is going to be improved enough to where maybe they get some stops that they didn't get last year. And again, playing at home with Caleb Williams at quarterback, they find a way to get it done. I'm going to go with USC to give Utah their second loss. And then they'll play Oregon on October the 28th at home. Uh, again, we talked about Bo Nix and his struggles on the road. This is going to be a very similar game, a very similar team in Oregon uh, to USC. Uh, it's it's going to be a good one, but I, I think playing at home, Utah, that's going to be enough of an advantage for them to get this win. Uh, it'll be close, probably come down to the final possession, but I'm going to go with Utah to get that win over Oregon. Then they'll play Arizona State on November 14th, home game. Uh, Arizona State, I think it's going to be better than some people expect. They've added a lot of transfers. Um, they've done a nice job there, but I think Utah is still just the better team uh, they're, they're a veteran team. I think the Utes get it done here at home. They beat Arizona State. And then they'll play Washington on the 11th on the road. Tough place to play. Going up against that high-powered Washington offense. But I think Utah is, is going to be able to, to move the ball, especially through the air in this game. Washington's secondary, maybe not as good as, as Oregon's or USC. So I'm expecting kind of a shootout, a game that goes back and forth. But again, I go back to home field advantage. I think that's the difference in a lot of these big games in the Pac-12. Washington has a great home field advantage, and I think that's going to pay off for them. They get the win over Utah. Utes fall to 7-3. and three. Then they'll play Arizona on the 18th. This is a potential upset alert game, especially after losing a third game. You, you wonder where Utah's head's going to be. Uh, their players, will they be down after after three losses here and, and all the expectations that they had? Arizona is going to be a good team. This is a program on the rise. This is a team that this game is going to mean a lot to. And I think there is a legitimate chance for an upset here. Uh, this is a tough one to predict. And between this game and the Baylor game, you could definitely see Utah losing a fourth game. But for my predictions, I'm going to say they find a way to win it. I just think that Utah, uh, because of, of their coaches, their veteran uh, players, I think they they will have enough to be able to go on the road and win this game. But don't be surprised, again, if they lose to Baylor or Arizona. But they could also beat Washington or beat USC or even Oregon State. So I think three losses is a pretty fair prediction going into the Colorado game. Um, I expect them to take care of business here. Colorado's going to be improved. They're going to have a much better roster, but not good enough to especially go on the road and beat Utah. So I think Utah wins that game, and they go 9-3. and three. So I'm right there with everyone else. I think 8-4 and four is probably more likely than 10-2, and two, though, because of those two games, Baylor and Arizona, that are really tricky. They could also lose to Oregon, maybe even lose to UCLA. So it's a really tough schedule. I think they finish 9-3 and three with this schedule. You can give me your thoughts, your predictions down in the comments below. And thanks for watching.